All right. Sorry about that. Awesome. So let me know in the chat box where you're from. Do you currently have a Thermomix on your bench? Fabulous. Oh, someone's got two. Krista's got two Thermomixes on her bench. Love hearing that. All right, so we'll just give everyone another minute before we get started. How's everyone's day today? We had a good one. It is very cold here in Bunyip today. Awesome, Mount Gambia. We've got someone from Queensland. I'm very jealous that Krista's in Queensland in the in the warmth. Holborn Valley, awesome, fabulous. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Chelsea McGill. I am a Thermomix Business Development Manager um, and I'm based in Bunyip in Victoria. I was a Thermomix consultant um, for four years before, or oh, three and a half years for becoming a business development, before becoming a business development manager. And I was a team leader for three years as well. Um, so I absolutely love my Thermomix. I have owned a Thermomix for um, about 10 years now. I did have a TM31 and then I had a TM5 and now, of course, I have a couple of TM6s. So I absolutely love my Thermomix and I also absolutely love Cookie Doo. I think it is such an incredible tool and we are so lucky to have it as part of our Thermomix. Um, when you are using Cookie Doo correctly, it can save you time, it can save you money, it can help you to eat healthier. Um, if that's what you are after, it can help you be more creative. It can do so many incredible things. And I know for me personally, it saves me a lot of money and it saves me a lot of time. I spend a lot of hours of my week scrolling through Cookie Doo looking for new amazing meals to eat. And I do like to think I am a little bit of a Cookie Doo master. So I am really excited to share some of my Cookie Doo tips and tricks with you guys tonight. So I would love you guys to ask me some questions along the way. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna try to cover everything that you need to know about Cookie Doo. So as we're going, if you've got questions, please yell out, pop them in the chat box. I will ask you guys to stay on mute for me just because it does create a little bit of background confusion when people come off mute. So I do ask you to stay on mute, but I would absolutely love if you could interact with me and ask me some questions that you want to know. So when we're doing something and you've got questions about that bit, please yell out. And then as we get towards the end, I will ask you if you have any questions about anything that we haven't covered yet. And if I have missed anything, I would love you guys to yell out and I would be happy to go through that with you as well. So if you've got a notepad and pen and you want to write some tips and tricks down, that is great. I am recording this. So if you would like the recording afterwards to be able to go back over it, that is totally fine as well. You can just let me know. Um, Chris just said it's cold and rainy in Queensland, which makes me feel a little bit better that I'm freezing here in Victoria. Um, so, all right, we are going to get cracking. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys and take you through Cookie Doo. Um, so who's using Cookie Doo at the moment? Pop it in the chat and let me know. Are you using Cookie Doo? Are you using it to its full advantage? Are you just using it a little bit? Tell me what you're doing. Kelly's using Cookie Doo daily, which is awesome. I love hearing that. So Cookie Doo is a website, as you can see here. It's also on the screen of your TM6. If you do have a TM5, it'll be attached to your cook key. And then it is also an app on your phone. So you can access Cookie Doo on all of your devices by using the one login. So that one email address logs you in on your Thermomix and then your phone, your computer, your tablet, whatever it may be as well. Um, getting a couple of comments coming in. Cookie Doo, awesome. Keep them coming, guys. So you can see here, hello, Chelsea McGill, what would you like to cook today? So I'm logged in, it knows who I am. Um, we've got that beautiful background picture of that fresh pasta there at the moment. Got our search bar here. We've got our what's new um, over here. So Cookie Doo is being constantly updated. To give you guys a little bit of an idea, I joined Thermomix four years ago and we had 42,000 recipes. We now have over 80,000 recipes from all around the world. So that number really is going up so quickly. That's about 10,000 new recipes each year, totally available to you when you have your Cookie Doo subscription, which is awesome. 
Um, cool. So just reading some of these comments coming through. Lizzie scrolls more than cooks. I get that. Awesome. Um, so here's a good place to come to if you want to check out what's new. You can also click see more and see all of those new recipes that have just come up. This is the new Fira cast iron cookware collection that's got some beautiful recipes in it there. That low waste chicken lasagna is absolutely delicious. If you haven't made it yet, definitely give it a shot. It's always got some great little tips about things that are happening on your Thermomix. So here is a little bit about the egg boiler in the TM6, um, which you can find on your mode screen. And then it's always changing. Cookie Dew is very smart. So cooler days call for comfort classics. So here's some beautiful comfort food to get you through these chilly winter nights. We've got some more about our TM6 modes explained. You've got some videos. So one of our latest features is that we can now scale our recipes. So we can scale up or scale down, which is absolutely awesome. Um, so serving sizes to suit you. So you can watch a little video about how to do that. And then down here, we've got what's the community, what the community's cooking, which used to be called Most Cooked, I think it was. It's just changed recently. So you can see that this one here, we obviously just had a Mother's Day because these are all beautiful Mother's Day dishes. So this goes off what people are cooking in their Thermomix all around Australia. So those most cooked recipes. So we have hollandaise sauce, another hollandaise sauce, pancakes and whipped cream. So I would say most of those were cooked over the weekend. So this is a really great place to come down to when you're looking for some inspo because this does change every few days based on what people all around Australia are making in their weeks. And we've got our latest collections here as well and some other bits and pieces that you can always browse down to. So Cookie Do is always changing, so you can check out that page and look for new updates. We've also got the For You tab. So Cookie Do does get smarter the more you use it. It is a little bit like Netflix and it will start to recognize things that you may like to eat based off what you've um, made before. So it is suggesting some low sugar savvy snacks for me, which is nice. Um, some low fat living and carb conscious cooking. Maybe I've been cooking lots of healthy food lately because <laughs> these are the different things that it's suggesting for me. So that will always be changing as well to help you feel inspired. And then we've got themes. So you might decide that you want to try something new. So you might want to cook like a French chef or say it with chocolate. So you can jump into those there. So we're going to go up into our profile. So up the top here is our profile. It is in your app as well. So Chelsea McGill view profile. Now you want to have a little flick through your um, profile and make sure that it's up to date. So you can select your cooking style. So here, I, I am all of these cooks. I'm a veggie cook, I'm a time-saving cook, a chefy cook, and a classic cook. But I'm a busy lady most of the time, so I'm going to go with the time-saving cook because that probably suits my persona most of the time. Down here, you've got accessories. Sally's just said, I don't have this view. Are you on your computer, Sally, or is this on your phone? So here, we have accessories. I'm actually on my thermo. I'm on my Thermomix. Uh, that'll be why. So you will need right. to do this one on your um, computer or your phone on the app. So you can do it on your phone. That's okay. I'll, I'll follow along on my phone. Beautiful. Awesome. Perfect. Thank Great. you. No worries at all. Um, so select your accessories and I do have a Thermomix cutter. So I am just going to add that in as well. So click the accessories that you do have so it can recommend those recipes for you. And then we've got our search filter preferences. Now I'll get you all to click on update and if you haven't done this before, you may be running on the Australian Cookie Do. So our Australian Cookie Do has about 3,500 recipes. Now, 3,500 is a lot of recipes, but I do find the Australian Cookie Do is a little bit limited and it does have certain things. It is missing certain things that other countries have. So you can scroll down. And we can go into your country or region and you can untick all of these. So you may find Australia is ticked for you. That is the default setting. So you can untick Australia and then you can scroll up and you can tick language English. So this is going to open you up to all of the English language recipes, which is going to be over 10,000. So we're going to jump from about 3,500 to up over that 10,000 mark. So that is quite a big difference. Now, if you do speak a different language, you can tick another language if you like. That is up to you. Thermomix version, if you have a TM6, just leave it because this means that you can cook all of the recipes. So 31, 5, and 6 recipes. 
If you do have a 31 or a 5, I would suggest ticking those ones um, because a lot of the TM6 recipes can't be done in the 5 or the 31. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you've got a 6, don't have any of them ticked. Lizzie's just said randomly Australia keeps finding its way back. That is very annoying. Um, so then click save. So Lizzie, make sure you're doing it in your profile and that you are clicking save. Um, if you do it in the search, that does reset every go. But if you are doing it in your profile, that should save for you. So we've saved those filter preferences. So I've got my Australia off and my English on. So that's gonna, just going to open me up there. So now we've saved it, we can jump out of that one and we can head back to our main page. So using our search bar, a couple of you said you are using your search bar, which is great. So tell me, guys, what do we love to eat? Um, Sally, your profile when you're on your computer is should be up here in the top right or even on your phone, you should see a little circle up in the top right and you should be able to click on that and go into your profile. Um, so guys, give me a favorite dish. What do we love to eat? It could be a Thermomix recipe. It may be maybe a pub favorite. Pop it in the chat and let me know. Renee loves a curry. Awesome. So I am going to, I pop that in the chat box. I meant to put it in my search bar, so please ignore that. So when I put curry into Cookie Do, we do have 510 results found relating to curry. So we have some beautiful curry pastes starting off with our basics and then we go on to our curries we've got curry powders um this looks beautiful golden pillow I haven't seen that recipe before tandoori chicken some more powders and pastes here so you can scroll through until you find something that you love now curry is quite a broad search you might want to um scale that down you might want to do a chicken curry so we've gone down to 117 results there so I'm going to look for a Thai green curry, maybe something that I want to eat. So I'm going to select that one. Now you can see here on your ratings that this one has 4.5 stars from 162 ratings. So that's going to be a great recipe. That's a really good one to make. Now when you make it, you can rate it. So I reckon, recommend you rating your recipes. It helps everybody to know if something is good or something is not and if they should be making it. So jump on and give everything a rating once you're done. When we scroll down, we've got our difficulty, we've got our prep time, total time, and our portion size. We've got our ingredients over here and our steps, all those tags, tips, and tricks as well. Then we have our nutritional value down here, which is handy if that is something that you are interested in. So when we head back up, we can add this one. So we can add it to a bookmark, to a collection, or maybe we're going to add it to our week. So I like to meal plan, and I'd love to know, do you guys like to meal plan? Pop it in the chat and let me know. Are we meal planners? Is that something that you like to do? Um, Charlotte just said, I never rate, but I always look at the ratings I'll rate from now on. I never used to rate either, but now I make a conscious effort too because I love using other people's ratings. So I think it's only fair that I rate the recipes back. So we're going to have Thai green chicken curry on Friday. We're going to have that as a fake away Friday. So I'm going to save that on Friday. And I'm going to head back to my search bar. Um, and we had risotto in the chat. Someone loves a risotto, which is great. So we have 119 different risottos on Cookie Do, which is awesome. Lots of option there. And we all know the Thermomix makes the best risotto you'll ever eat. So I can scroll through and find a risotto that tickles my fancy. Lots of different ones there. And I like this pumpkin risotto with bacon. This is one of my favorites. This one has 4.5 stars from 994 ratings. So you know that's going to be a good one. So again, we're going to add this to our week. We're going to have that on Saturday. What about a dessert, guys? Who's got a favorite dessert? Pop it in the chat and let me know. Lizzie says, aspire to be a meal planner. Well, I'm hoping this helps you tonight to do a little bit more meal planning. Sally, when you're meal planning on your um, phone or computer, you can do weeks at a time instead of just doing like one day. Uh, oh, awesome. Oh, sticky date. All right. I'm going to have to go with sticky date here. I like to think I'm a bit of a sticky date connoisseur. It is my favorite dessert in the whole world. Um, and once you make the Thermomix sticky date, you will never go back to um, restaurant sticky date. That's ruined that for me. That's for sure. Has everyone made the sticky date? This one here in their Thermomix? Pop it in the chat and let me know. Um, so our sticky date pudding, 
This one has a thousand ratings. So this is a five star recipe, guys. 4.9 stars. I don't think something can have a total of five. So 4.9 out of a thousand ratings. A um, couple of people had yet said yes. A couple of people said no. Gabby and Joy, Joe, Joy, sorry, you are going to have to make it. It is amazing. I make it in little muffin molds. Um, it cooks quicker, so you can eat it quicker. And you can also freeze portions, which is great. So we can add this one to our week and we're going to have that on Friday night. Now, you can see here our serving size is kind of lit up or highlighted. So when you click on serving size, you can actually change the portions of your recipes. So a lot of them have already been scaled for you. Some haven't been. So you can do that yourself with help from, from um, the website. But this one knows that everybody wants to eat sticky date. So we can actually turn this into 18 portions instead of 12, right? If you want to freeze it or if you're having guests over. So you can click on that. And you can see that our ingredients have gone up here. So this is going to make more portions and our cook time may change slightly as well, um, depending on what it is that we're doing. So that has scaled our recipe for us. This is a really handy one if it might just be you at home or just you and one other person. I do it with a lot of the sweets. Um, I do love a sweet and I try not to eat them all, but if I make a sticky date pudding, I'll just keep going back for more. So I might like to halve that recipe. So I only eat a few pieces instead of the whole thing. Um, but that is another great way to save money. If you are cooking for less people and you want to reduce your grocery bill, you can go through and scale the recipes down to make them a little bit more cost-effective for you as well. So now I'm going to click on my week. So we have added a few things in here. So you can see in our house tonight, we had chicken and warm potato salad. Tomorrow night, we're having a black rice bowl with chicken and mushroom. Friday, we've got the pastizio. I never say that right. You can see here's our curry that we added in our sticky date and then our pumpkin risotto as well. So I'm going to click on the three dots and I'm going to add this to my shopping list, add the sticky date to my shopping list and add our risotto to our shopping list. I'm going to scroll back up and you can see over here that we have our shopping list um, option for us. Now, Lizzie's just asked, why did the sticky date only give you a scale up and not scale down? Not all of them give a scale down. I think it goes off popularity. Um, I think most people want a double sticky date rather than half it. Um, but when you have a look through, a lot of them will have a halving option. So it just depends. Um, so we can click show ingredients and I will show you guys how to um, scale manually in a moment as well. Um, so Sally, if you just click on the three dots, you've just got an add to shopping list button here. So just go through your meals you've added to your planner and add to your shopping list. Then we click the show ingredients button. Now this collates our shopping list down. So tell me guys, who's using this function at the moment? Who's doing their meal plan and their shopping list? Let me know. So we get that beautiful shopping list in our aisles, which is awesome. So if you like to go to the supermarket, you can have your phone out. And if you've got the Cookie Do app on your phone, this shopping list will be there for you. We'll have pre-populated onto your phone as well. So you've got your ingredients in your aisles. You can head to each aisle and grab what you need. Now, before you go to the supermarket, make sure you mark off anything that you've already got in the cupboard. So I know I've got bicarb, so I don't need that. I've got brown sugar and raw sugar, so I can mark those off. I always have wine. That's not an issue. Um, and I don't need to buy water. So go through and mark off any of those things that you've already got and leave on those items that you do still need to purchase. Then down here, you can add any additional items. So say I need toilet paper. I can add that to my list as well. Here are the things that I've already got in my cupboard that I've marked off. And here are the things that I'm saying I need to buy this week. Now, as I said, you can head to the supermarket and go around and grab all your things or... You can share, you can print, you can email, copy and paste or my absolute favourite. I live 15 minutes to the closest Woolly, So that's a 30 minute round trip just to drive to the supermarket. That's before I actually do my groceries. So I'm an online shopper. I'm too busy to go to the supermarket these days. So I click the order ingredients button and this one takes me over to Whisk, which is the third party. And we select Woolies. So currently we are only affiliated with Woolies. That's the only supermarket that we can do this with. But it brings you over to this page. And this is where you can change any brands that you might not like. So it's given me White Wings flour. I like to buy Safeway brand flour because it is more cost effective when we go through too much flour for me to be buying um, name brands. So I can swap that out. Go through and make sure you're happy with all of your different brands. 
Now, I do get asked a lot if it picks the most expensive brand. It definitely doesn't. You can see here we've got a Woolies brand oil. Um, so it will give you, give you different ones. So just go through and make sure you're happy with them. I always make sure I've got free range eggs, not caged eggs. Um, I actually think that it gets smarter because I am lactose intolerant. So I do buy lactose free cream and it has bought that up for me already. So I do think that it does work that out after a while. So go through and make sure you're happy with all of those brands. You're happy with all the bits and pieces, whatever it may be. Um, once you go, yep, I'm happy with all of that. It didn't find toilet paper, but when I click find, it will bring it up. So I can go through and select the toilet paper that I want. Everything looks good there. And then I can add to my Woolies cart. And this is going to populate straight into my Woolies online. As I said, I do Woolies online each week. So then I just go through and I add the things I bought last week. So I go through my apples, um, you know, bread, milk, whatever else I need. Sally, did you want to ask something? Yeah. No, sorry. I actually um, <laughs> was hit the right okay. part of the screen. Sorry. That is, that is fine. Um, so that will populate over, add in those extra bits and pieces that you buy each week. And then you have done your meal plan and your grocery shopping. Sally did just say, um, no longer getting halfway through a recipe to realize I've forgotten something. And that used to happen to me all the time. But I love using this function that you get absolutely everything that you need. This is another great way to save money with cookie do because some of you might find when we head to the supermarket and we're aimlessly wandering and picking up bits and pieces that we don't actually need, it ends up costing quite a bit more and we do end up with quite a lot of food waste at the end of the week. So I found since I started using my meal plan and shopping list, I end up with a lot less food waste and it has reduced the cost of my grocery bill dramatically because I am buying exactly what I need versus buying what I think I need, which makes a huge difference. So for those of you that haven't used this function before, did that help? Do you think that that might be something that you start doing, whether it be the meal plan, the shopping list, the direct to Woolies, whatever it might be? I'm not going to add that to my cart because I will end up forgetting to remove it. And then I'll end up with groceries that I do not need next week. A um, couple of yeses coming through there, which is great. So meal plan, add them into your week, click on the three dots and add them to your shopping list and then create the shopping list. And then you can click that order ingredients button if that is how you want to go about it. Then you can clear that shopping list once you're done and then that'll be ready to go in the next week. So this is a brilliant function. It is so handy. Like I said, it saves a lot of time, money and food wastage as well, which is always a win. So that is our meal plan and our shopping list. Um, Alicia said, yes, but our closest Woolly or Coles is two and a half hours away. Oh, that's not ideal, Alicia. I'm assuming they don't deliver to your house. You can use it for click and collect as well. I don't know if that's something that you do if you do a big like, monthly shop or whatever it may be. But then we've got my recipes up here. So you guys can head up to my recipes and we've got a few great things that we can do in my recipes as well. So you can create your own collection. So you can see I've got some different collections here. So I've got a cocktail one that I started, budget meals, recipes for big families. A lot of these are based around cooking classes I've run previously. Um, my When I was away with my Thermomix, salads that I wanted to try, that kind of stuff. So you can um, create your own little collections here. I do also have like to try. So when I see something that I like the look of, but I've already done my meal plan, I can throw it in my collection. So I click on those three dots on the recipe and add to collection and I can add it to my to try collection. So then when I'm doing my meal plan, if I'm not sure what I want to eat that week, I might just jump back to my to try and then I can make some things that I've been wanting to try for a while. So you can just leave them sitting there and then come and pick them out when you're ready for them. One of the great things about collections is once you make a collection, turn your th on your um, computer or your phone, turn your Thermomix on. And if you've got Wi-Fi on, that will sync onto your Thermomix and then that collection becomes accessible offline. So if you're someone that likes to holiday with their Thermomix or maybe you've got poor internet at home, if you have your internet connected, they will upload and then they are available there. So all of these recipes here are available on my Thermomix with no internet. So that is really handy for me. I do take my Thermomix away and I do have really terrible internet where I live, which does drop out sometimes. So I love that I know I've got access to all of these recipes here without having any internet, which is awesome. 
So collections are great to try new things, maybe to put in your favorites, whatever it might be. I do forget some of the brilliant things that we eat because there's so much on here. And then I come and find them again in my collections. And then, of course, you can access collections with no internet as well. We do have another one here called Created Recipes. Now, your Created Recipes, this is for Cookie Do 3.0. So some of you may have upgraded your subscription to Cookie 3.0 when it came out a little while ago now. It must be over a year ago now. Some of you may have chosen to stay on 2.0. Um, but if you are on 3.0, you can upload your own recipes to Cookie Do and then use them as guided cooking. Now, you can see these ones here are uh, ones that I've added from the recipe community. So the jam ball donuts, just like the market ones, you may have seen on my Instagram that I made these on the weekend and they are absolutely amazing, highly recommend. So the recipe community website is um, the old cookie do essentially. It's the first Thermomix recipe platform. If you haven't used it, um, it is a brilliant website to be on. Um, there are um, thousands and there's about 30,000 recipes on there and they have all been uploaded by people like you or I. So if you like to create recipes, you can add them to the recipe community so other people can get access to them as well. Um, so recipe community is recipecommunity.com.au and you can have a browse on there. Sally, are you eating the donuts right now? Yes, obsessed. Yeah. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> Huge donuts tonight. There you go. So if you haven't made the donuts, guys, highly recommend. I cook them in the air fryer, so a little bit easier than having to fry them. A little bit healthier so you can eat even more of them. Um, so yeah, you, how do you get the sugar to stay on? You've got to brush them with a bit of melted butter. Yeah, yeah. that's what I did. Yeah, I think I think I forgot to write that in my post the other day. Um, so a bit of melted butter and then through your sugar. Um, so you can download these recipes from Recipe Community into your cookie do. So I will show you how we do that. So I'll go to the recipe community. Is anyone using the recipe community website at the moment? Gabby's just asked what um, jam I use. So um, the Dollar Sweets raspberry filling is amazing. I've struggled to find it lately. So I bought from a cake shop. I think it's called Backles, B-A-K-K-E-L-S. Um, it's called Raz Plum Filling. And it's exactly like the hot jam donut filling. I have used normal jam before, which was really nice, but it doesn't have that kind of consistency that donut jam has. So um, I have a look at your local cake shop or jump online and you can buy it. So this is the recipe community website. As I said, you guys can upload your own recipes onto here, which is fun. I have uploaded a couple of recipes over the years onto here. Um, so like, let's do the donuts. Um, for example, just because we've been talking about it. So when I put jam ball donut, we've got a couple of ones here. This is the recipe here that I use. You can see it's got 72 votes, so it's very popular. Um, Elise said, before upgrading to TM6, I used recipe community. Yeah, awesome. So a lot of people use it with the older model thermo mixes. Um, and then some people do still love it when they have their TM6 and cookie do as well. So when you go into this, you can see you've just got this button here, add to cookie do. So I'm going to click add to cookie do. If you're not logged in, it will ask you to log in. And then I'm going to confirm that I want to bring this one over. Now I can change the image if I want. I can change the name, whatever it might be. And I can make some changes to the recipes. So I used oat milk. I did say that I can't have regular milk anymore. So I can change this to oat milk. Um, and then butter. That all sounds good. And I'm going to say, um, just so I remember what the feeling's called. There we go. Now you can see this has come up as just one giant step. So if you transfer this over to your Thermomix, to your cookie do, this is what you will see on the screen of your TM6. It will just be one giant step. It won't come up like the regular guided cooking. So we want to edit it a little bit. So I am going to just space between each step. So nice and simple. Here we go. And then I want to um, pop that I use an air fryer.
So I'm going to preheat air fryer to 200 degrees. Add balls and I cook for um, five to eight minutes, depending on size. And then when cooked, take out and brush with melted butter. Roll in sugar and use a piping bag. I use a Nurofen syringe to fill mine. Um, fill them and away you go. So we have just edited that recipe now. So that's going to come up with the different steps on my screen. So instead of just coming up as one giant step, I've just made a few changes and I'm going to save that one. And that is now saved onto my cookie do. And I can now access that on the screen of my Thermomix for my guided cooking, which is awesome. So you can have a little browse through this and have a play. You can see here, I've got a couple of skinny mix of recipes. So I don't actually put her recipes on my cookie do, but I do just have them here. So they're some of the ones that we love. So if I know I want to add this to my meal plan, I can just add the name of the recipe into my weekly planner. So I know that that's what we're having this week. Another thing I do is like roast, leftovers or a barbecue. They may be things that we have in our house that aren't Thermomix made. So again, they're not recipes. It just literally has the name on it. So I can add that into my week. So I know this week we're having a roast or we're having leftovers one night. So if my hubby turns on the Thermomix and thinks what's for dinner, he knows tonight's a leftover night. So that's nice and easy for us. But we've got heaps of great recipes in here that you can add. So how did you create those? So you've got this little button down here. So instead of importing from the recipe community, you can create your own recipes. So if you click the plus button, you can go create recipe. So you can do something like leftovers and then you hit create. So I will just give you an example. And then I'm not going to put anything in here. I'm just going to click done. And here is our leftover recipe that we can, or our, our leftover meal plan that we can add into our weekly meal plan. We can also, um, make a recipe so say chocolate cake I've got a chocolate cake recipe that's been in my family for years that we absolutely love that I want to put on my cookie do so I can manually add this recipe in so I can add ingredients so I can say I'm just making this up guys so bear with me 200 grams of self-raising flour um 200 grams of butter 200 grams of sugar I forgot to put the grams in so go through and add all your ingredients in one by one, whatever it may be. And then you can add your steps in as well. So cream, butter and sugar, speed for, for 20 seconds. So that's my first step. But now if I want to make it guided cooking, I can click, I can edit this. So, and I can highlight butter, click on my scales and butter. Now that one is a guided cooking recipe and that's going to automatically bring that up on the screen of my Thermomix. So again, here my sugar. So now on the screen of my Thermomix, that will have 200 grams of butter, 200 grams of sugar and bring my scales up automatically. And then this one here, I can go into the blades and I can say 20 seconds, no temperature, speed four and save. So now those underlying steps are actual guided cooking steps. And this will be like using a cookie do recipe, um, but it is one that you have created or maybe translated to Thermomix, or maybe it's something that you found years ago on a website that you absolutely love and you want to add into your cookie do. So you can have a little play around with that. So you can add your ingredients and then your steps and then highlight those ones that you want using your cooking settings or your scales there to make those into proper guided cooking steps. Then I would. Oh, oh, I'm not sure what happened there. It's just logged me out. Lizzie's just said, I've tried to do this on an iPad, but the touch function won't let me add the guided cooking. Do you have to use a computer? Um, I don't think so. I thought that I'd done it on my phone before. Um, my suggestion would be maybe click the desktop website button when you go, um, when you're on an iPad or a computer in your um, like URL bar next to that, there's a drop down and you can click, you go to desktop website. That might be um, helpful for you. Ash has just said can be done on all devices. So yeah, I did think that it can. So maybe um, I'd just give it another shot. There you go. Sally's just done it on her phone. Awesome. Uh, it may just be the browser that you're using. Um, maybe try a different browser as well. 
sorry, ingredients, steps, highlight, and then add in that, um, the guided cooking step. And then that will come up perfectly on the screen in your Thermomix. Then you can save it. And then you'll be able to add that one into your weekly planner as well. So like this one here, I'm going to add to my week. I'm going to have donuts on Friday. I'm having some delicious food this week. I've got donuts, I've got sticky date pudding. And then you can see here it is in your weekly meal plan. And you can add that one to your shopping list as well using those three dots there. So you can import recipes from the recipe community. You can um, create your own recipes. You can edit them and then you can add them into your week and your shopping list as well. Um, I did just want to show you one more time about the scaling of the recipes. So like pizza dough, for example, is a good one. So pizza dough is four pieces, but when you click on that, you can scale down and you can scale up. Um, Sally Smith, yes, you just missed how to import. Um, if you shoot me a message later, um, I can give you the recording so you can rewatch that one. So you can scale to two, four or six pieces, depending on what suits you, so scale down or scale up. But some of the recipes don't have auto scaling on them, or maybe you're not happy with that size. So you can actually click make it your own. And this will bring you back over to that edit of editing of the recipe. So it does have different portion sizes. So I might think I just want to make three pizzas. So it will actually help me do it here. So you don't manually have to scale it. It will do it for you, but you do need to use the scaling software that it has. So some recipes will have auto scaling on it. Some won't have auto scaling. And if they don't, click make it my own and then come in here and have a little play around with it. Just be wary that we don't want to make things too big because we do need to make sure we're in our max fill line on our bowl. But that is a great little step there for you as well and really, really handy to be able to do that one. Um, so does anybody have any questions? Do you have any questions about anything that we've just gone through or is there anything that we haven't gone through that you wanted to know about? I have covered all the things that I had written down that I wanted to take you through today. So most cook, search functions, portions, um, filters using our English language filter. We do also have some other filters that I do want to remind you of as well. And then we did our meal plan, shopping list, Woolies online, collections, and no internet needed there. And then the 3.0, which is importing and editing and creating your own recipes. The last thing I wanted to show you is when you go into your search, you do have a filters button here. So if you're like, I'm looking for a main meal, I'm not quite sure what I want, but I don't want to browse through 80,000 recipes. So you can go into your filters and you can search by category. So I can go, I feel like a vegetarian main dish this week. That'll help keep my budget down, change it up a little bit. So I can click on that. And then it brings up 735 main vegetarian dishes for me. So that's a great way to search without actually having to search the whole cookie do. Some of the other great filters that we have are an ingredients filter. So if you get to the end of the week and your fridge is looking a little bit sad and you've got two chicken breasts in there, you could type chicken breast. That's not going to come up if I've got a vegetarian filter on it. Um, but you could put chicken breast. And that's going to bring up meals that I can use my chicken breast up in, which is really great. So that stops you wasting food as well, helps you to reduce the grocery bill. And then you might want to do, okay, I want dinner in less than 30 minutes. And I want it to serve at least four people. And then I can click there and we've got um, 35 main dishes that use chicken breast that are done in less than 30 minutes to serve four people. So those filters are a really great way to um, reduce your food waste, help you save money um, and look for different things without actually having to scroll all of the recipes on Cookie Do because I know that that can get a little bit overwhelming when there is so much on there. So Filters in your search is a really great way to find new dishes and try new things. So remember, you can search for an ingredient. You can search for tags. Now, that might be gluten-free. That might be vegetarian. Maybe that's lunchbox, money-saving, budget, whatever it might be. You've got your prep time and your total time. So if you want dinner on the table in less than 30 minutes and portions, if there's only four of you, maybe there's eight of you, whatever it may be. You can also search by star rating as well, which is handy. And then, of course, your language there. 
Um, just checking our questions. So just wondering with cost saving to you have to you have to meal plan, plan meals that use a lot of the same ingredients. Definitely um, planning meals that use the same ingredients can help you to reduce the cost. So maybe do three dishes that use chicken breast. And then in that week, you could buy the bulk chicken breast, which is going to help to reduce the cost as well. So that's a really great way to help you bring down the cost of your meals too. And always remember, guys, you can substitute. If you're making a dish and it asks for 10 grams of walnuts, and the smallest amount of walnuts you can buy is 100 grams and it costs $8 for 100 grams of walnuts, you can always leave them out. Or maybe you've got some cashews in the cupboard that you could use instead. So remember, substituting is a great way to bring down the cost of a meal as well. And Google is your very best friend when it comes to substituting. I am constantly Googling, what can I substitute for so-and-so? What can I substitute for so-and-so? Because sometimes I look at a dish and I think I would never use that ingredient again. And I can't justify having to buy that for 10 grams. So I substitute all the time and that is totally fine. Um, Lizzie's just said, it's been fantastic, but my brain will need help to remember, will you send the recording after or do we have to request? I can definitely shoot everyone the recording if you like. I can send a bulk email and send that out um, if that's easy for everyone because I know that was a lot of information to take in and you may want to watch it back again to help you learn. Um, please let me know if you have any more questions, anything at all. I would love to answer them for you now. Otherwise, that is our cookie do session done. So a big thank you to everybody who has come on tonight. I really hope that that has helped you with Cookie Do. I hope that you're feeling a little bit more confident and I hope you learned something tonight that you didn't know um, before. I would love that if you did and I'm more than happy to send the recording out to you as well. So thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you coming along tonight. If you have any questions, if you don't have a consultant and you would like one, please let me know and I can tee you up with somebody. Um, but we are always here to support you. So please just yell out if you ever have any questions at all. Um, and thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your night, everybody. And I hope to see you all again soon. Alice, you've just got a question there about searching nut free. Sorry. Thank you. I didn't see that. Elise, is there a way to search nut free? Absolutely. You can use, um, I'll just open my screen share again. And if you want to jump off, go for it. But if you do want to stay on for this question, um, feel free. So when you go into your filters, I might just remove those filters that I already have. So when you go into your filters with nut free, um, you could put it in tags here. So nut free, and then that comes up as a hashtag. So most of the recipes are hashtagged. So we've got nut free. So there are 3000 things that have been tagged nut free. So that's really helpful if you are wanting to cook nut free. Um, so using that tag there is gonna be the easiest way to go about, about getting your nut free recipes come up. I hope that helped. Um, just checking, I haven't missed any more. Yes, for the recording, lots wanting the recording. Awesome. No worries. You can do chicken and nut free, yep. So you can select as many of those filters as you want. So say you wanna go in your ingredients and you wanna go chicken. Um, maybe we're gonna go, where did my chicken breast go? There we go chicken breast and then I can go into my tags and I can go nut free and it's telling me that we've got nine things that fit that chicken breast and that nut free category you would probably find that there will be more um, but they won't all have a hashtag on them um, but that's a great way to kind of narrow it down slightly when you're in your ingredient search you do need to remember that where is it here um Chicken can be written different ways in different recipes. So you can see you've got chicken thigh, you've got skinless chicken breast, which has 29 options. Um, chicken breast, chicken breast, boneless, skinless. So there are some other ones as well. So you may want to select a couple of those when you select your nut free as well, which is just going to bring up more options for you there. Um, as you said, a few of the recipes have almond meal, et cetera, but then you can sub, of course, definitely. And I'm all about substituting. So when you do have something like that, you know, you can substitute your almond meal for um, like your tapioca for starch or something like that to thicken it up as well. If you've got any other questions, yell out, let me know. I'd love to answer them before we head off.
Thanks, Chelsea. No worries at all. I think that was Anne that said that. Thanks for coming along tonight, Anne. I hope that helped you. Yes. Thank you yes. so much. Fabulous. Awesome. Sally, I know that you got a lot out of that tonight. I'm glad that you learned yeah. a few things loved there. It. Love, love, loved, loved it. Thank you so awesome. much. No worries at all. Um, all right, well, it doesn't look like there's any more questions, so I will shut her down and I will email you all the recording. Um, I've got yep. to upload it to YouTube, so it might take me a day or so, but I will get it out to you in the kind of the next 24 or so hours. So thank you again, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your night and I will see you next time. Yep. Bye. Bye.